All right. Okay. So we are back We're on day six, day six of our book reading and discussion. Um, they're single in love. Eight principles for the woman waiting for her God ordained purpose mate. Again, for those of you that are tuning in, this book is available currently as a paperback and Kindle version on Amazon. So you go ahead, support, get your copy. Audiobook information will be out shortly as I did record, finally recorded the audiobook for this book. So tonight we're gonna to talk about chapter seven. We have one more night, tomorrow night is our finale. Tomorrow we will be diving into the final chapter of the book. Um, but truly thankful and happy for those that have been joining and taking this journey with me um, is definitely always a blessing. All right, so chapter seven is one of those, excuse me, one of those chapters that I can honestly say I have never heard any other expert discuss this chapter, discuss relationships and love at this capacity. Um, when God gave it, I was actually surprised when God told me, told me this concept because oftentimes we don't, we don't think about, right? We think about the physical, we think about how much they should make, things like that. But we don't think about the fact that physically, you, you know, as far as our, geograph our geographical location, we might not have, sorry, someone is like banging on someone's door outside, I'm sorry. Okay. So let's talk about the land of familiar. So right now, our land of familiar is basically known as our comfort zone. So that's what I'm talking about. It's time for some of you to get out your comfort zone. Um, it is the place that we tend to not change. We tend to stay pretty much the same. Um, and that really could just be mindset. So I have known people that have physically moved to different locations, but they said they had the same mindset. Um, they didn't think outside of the scope of doing something different. So they think that, oh, because I moved to a new location that I, you know, I did what I was supposed to do. But if you go there with the same mindset, then did, did, did you really change anything, right? So again, same mindset is what keeps us in the land of familiar. Um, a lot of times our land, our land of familiar are the places that we were born. So for many of us, we are gonna talk about that. Um, a lot of times it's the job and the field that we are working in that does not challenge us, that does not you know, speak to our purpose. It's not helping us to utilize our gifts. Those are the types of things that we're gonna also discuss because this has this ties in a lot with, you know, potentially meeting that person. Um, and the land of familiar also is going to exist in um, our physical life and mind. So this is why we say it's a it's a mindset, it's a physical location, physically moving, you know, but we have to kind of bring them together in order for it to start to make sense for us. All right, so <clears throat> let's move forward. I always say, you know, in a book of Ruth, she left. Right, so she had to leave her hometown to go to Bethlehem in order for her to meet um, to meet Boaz. Jesus had to leave Nazareth, right? I mean, so he had to leave Bethlehem to go to Nazareth and to go to all the places that God told him to do, so that he can receive the blessings. So sometimes we have to start really thinking about that. Like, am I am I going to be prosperous? Am I going to be abundant? Am I going to receive the love that I'm supposed to receive if I stay where I'm at? And I do love the people that have gotten out their own way to at least say, I'm going to physically leave, right? They may leave where they were and they go to a new location. And that's also amazing because that already shows you that I can do that, right? Some people, and when I say some people have never left, there are some people that have never left their city or state to even go on vacation. Um, there are people that never went to college you know, so they don't know anything except their town, their city. And I always, I always feel sad for the people that, that were born and raised in those small cities and those small towns. If you were born in a, in a town with 20,000 people, and in some places it's less than 20, it's like 5,000 people. And you're like, well, where's my husband or where's my wife? 
you're in the town with people that nine times out of 10, they're going to be your relatives in some aspect. So you really have to start realizing like, I do, I might need to just leave. Right. And, and we, and when we look at, um, you know, just going back to the Bible, a lot of the major figures had to leave their town. And there actually is a scripture that says that, you know, a prophet will not be embraced in their hometown. And that's because, again, we have to sometimes go out. So you have to start thinking about it from that. When you want to look at it from a spiritual, a spiritual, a spiritual stance, look at it from that, that, um, that mind frame and just start realizing, like, you know what, maybe I am holding myself back, okay? So the land of familiar in regards to your thinking about love. So this is something else. Again, a lot of us are stuck on looks. Um, a lot of us need to get out the land of familiar about even personality you know, characteristics. We've been talking a lot about that, you know, your type um, and how to meet them. I meet a lot of uh, women that feel like dating apps is the only the only way that they can meet someone. <clears throat> so they never go outside. They never go anywhere. They just sometimes just go straight to work, come straight back. Um, they even go shopping at the same supermarkets. So you're seeing the same people. So when you have that type of mindset, is going to, you're going to end up seeing the same people. And so if you're only going to the same devices and saying, I'm only going on Facebook dating and I'm only going to go on, you know, be okay because the kind of men that my man is there, that is going to hinder you from potentially meeting that person. So you got to start thinking, all right, how can I, where, you know, where can I go to potentially meet someone new? And this is where I honestly say, just ask God, God, where should I go? What should I do? right? And you're going to start getting ideas uh, of things that you can do, places that you can go visit, even in your own city and state. It doesn't have to be that the next big move. If you are, uh, you know, we label ourselves, I'm an introvert. When, when we label ourselves, well, that's why I don't go out. Even introverts go out. And there are a lot of successful introverts out there. You know, think about Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was, he was definitely an introvert. But Michael Jackson also had to use his gifts and talents. And a lot of times that had to take him outside and it took him to, across the world. And we, you know, we knew him, we knew his music. We can, we, we were able to see him and connect with him, you know, whether it was personally or not, but we were able to. So if you have identified and you, you're labeling yourself as an introvert and you're, you know, you go what we call hermit mode. I, I'm saying in hermit mode, some people live in hermit mode. It's not for you to get outside. If, again, if you're getting stuck on a particular look, I'm telling y'all, a lot of you have not been on a first date in a long time because the person, the people that want to date you don't look like you're tight. I honestly believe that the more that we focus on our type, that is going to, that we're going to have even less experiences. You're going to have less dating experiences because you're so focused on every time that I've dated a guy that was my type, I never got the experience that I desired. I never had someone that treated me well because I got stuck in that my type. Um, and we tend to allow ourselves to be used because, you know, well, I got my type. He's, in, you know, he's interested in me. So, you know, this is going to work out and you're not getting the full experience. So, Start really thinking about how to how to help yourself to get out your comfort zone when it comes to looking at the what does love look like, and helping you to also prepare for that. We have to start thinking about the physical. Like so, like I said, if God is telling you to start relocating or to relocate, what is stopping you? What's holding you back? Um, maybe you're not meant to relocate, but maybe you're meant to travel. Right. So a lot of people know that in October, beginning of November, I went to Murder Beach for a month and no, I didn't meet anyone there, but it was an opportunity for me to go and explore and to identify, you know, you know, being next to water has helped me to always get clarity, to get some answers. So it could simply, it could simply be that it might not, you know, I get, a, I get annoyed. And I, I, I say this even more now, I get very annoyed where I meet people, men or women that, especially single men or women that go out with only the intent on how can I meet someone? Am I going to meet someone today? 
like, oh, let's go someplace so we can get some drinks and we can meet, we can meet guys. Or let's go get some food so we can meet um, girls. Just go for the experience. Go for the opportunity to explore, right? <clears throat> Is God telling you to start changing your job? So again, changing your job can help you to meet that person because changing that job can take you to a different um, part of your state, right? So I think about New York City, we have the five boroughs. There are some people that were born in Brooklyn, they work in Brooklyn, they only do things in Brooklyn. They don't go to Queens, Bronx, Manhattan, Staten Island, definitely not, but they only do everything in Brooklyn. If they get stuck there, Yes, Brooklyn, because I just I, I I did a post a couple of days ago. But Brooklyn is like 96 square miles, which is pretty big for a city, but you are still limiting the people that you can connect with. So let's say if you did take a job in the city, right? You're taking that train or you're taking that express bus, because that's where I'm on right now. And now you're going to be able to connect and you're going to see people and now you're going to start to explore. So sometimes God might be having you to change your jobs. But then also God might be having you to change a job that says, you know what, we're going to, we, we need for you to relocate down to Texas. We need you to relocate over to, you know, Colorado. Um, we need you to relocate to Alaska. You know, a lot of times people think that these other states, <clears throat> states that are not as popular. If you have that mindset, well, you know, it's not popping, you know, I'm not going to be able to go to brunch. If you've never been there, you can't say that. <clears throat> If you have never been there, you cannot say that. So unless God, if God is giving you clear, 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 if he's saying, yes, I need for you to go there. I need you to take this job there. I recommend and I highly encourage that you go. And then if you, what's holding you back? <clears throat> A lot of times we are afraid you know, I'm hearing so many stories on, I was in a Facebook group and actually I left the Facebook group. Um, there was a Facebook group I was a part of and um, it was about women that, that wanted to travel. So majority of the women did travel, but then there was a population of the women that never traveled. And I remember someone did pose the question like, what's stopping you from traveling if, excuse me, if you don't travel? And a lot of them are like, they have been told stories by their family. So a lot of times your family and your friends will project this fear that if you ever leave this city and you go to somewhere like New York City, like everyone has this image of New York City being a place that if you come here, the moment you get out of JFK or LaGuardia, someone's going to knock you upside your head, rob you, take your suitcases, and they're going to leave you for dead. Like people have this mindset about New York City. And I'm like, it's really not that bad. Or they're like, well, I can't come to New York City. And if I do, I have to stay in Times Square. And I tell people, coming to Times Square is actually probably the most dangerous part that you <laughs> would want to stay. You know, so we have a lot of homeless people. We have a lot of robberies. Why would you want to stay there? There are other places that you can go. But they have been told this. So they're like, I'm, I'm going to stay in my town. I'm never going to leave because... Everyone told me that if I go anywhere else, it's going to be dangerous. And again, if you are in a town with 5,000 people and you're looking for your significant other, how do you, how likely do you think that you're going to marry someone who is not your relative? Like, let's call a spade a spade. If you are in a town with five, 10,000 people, nine times out of 10, they're either married already, they're under, they're, um, underage, or they are potentially a relative of yours. Get out your city. Let go of that fear. Drop that fear, kill that noise, surround yourself with individuals. You know, there are so many traveling groups out there that you can travel with. And I mean, anything is a fear, anything is a risk. You know, you can potentially go with a dangerous group. Yes, I, I know that what just happened in, um, down in Cabo, that's going to add another layer of fear, especially for those that are single. And then you're like, well, I don't want to travel with her friends did this and I'm traveling with you for strangers. Discernment, discernment, discernment. But you got to get out there right? Blessings are often found outside of our comfort zone. So if we want to have the blessing of love, if we want to have the blessing of having that, you know, partnership, you got to get out your comfort zone. You might have to leave that state, even someplace as big as New York City. I don't believe that my person is in, is in the city. I don't believe that. I truly believe my person is somewhere else. And 
I just have to accept that because yes, we do have what I think like two million people here. It might be more than that. There's a lot of people here, but doesn't mean that your person is here. So, and I will. Um, there's something I've been studying, and I haven't fully got a full understanding of it. So that's why I have not um, shared it yet. But once I have a better understanding, I will share with those that have signed up. I will share this information with you because I feel like it's an extra layer of inf information and knowledge that can help us as far as traveling and relocation and kind of understanding where we could potentially meet our person. So once I have that like full understanding, I, you, you guys know me, I'm not going to share anything that I don't personally fully understand, but it is giving me a little bit of insight and understanding. All right. So when we leave the land of familiar, we have to leave with pure intentions, right? So again, I don't want us to go out there like, well, I'm going to Miami because I want to meet my man down there. Let's get out that mindset, right? We're not always thinking about meeting the person. We're looking for, I'm going here because I want to experience a new experience. I want to have an opportunity to explore a new land. You know, this might be where God might tell me to move. This might be where an answer can pop up, but it should not be, you're going out there searching and you're looking for someone, right? Like I said before, there's often too many people out there who are only going outside with the intent of, I'm meeting someone. Who can I meet? Can, am I going to meet a man? Am I going to get attention today? You might just go out there and be a blessing, right? Follow God. And you cannot follow a trend. So like I said in my book, in the early 2000s, there were a lot of people moving to a major city in New York City. They was, leaving, they was leaving New York in waves. They was like, we're going down here. And it was a lot of women. I'm meeting my man down there. And when they got down there, they got a, they got a true awakening. It was like, oh, this is not what I thought was going to happen. Yeah, because you went down there. But you didn't have pure attention. And God didn't tell you to go. So you just went and followed a trend. And you still got your feelings hurt. Your husband still might have been back up here in New York or New Jersey. Right. So we got to follow what God is telling us to do and not what our family and friends, you know, understand that the role that others um, that uh, the others never went could put you in front of your future husband. And that's something that I think about as far as being a trailblazer. Right. Being a trailblazer indicates that you're going to take a path that a lot of people are not going to take. And the one thing that I love about my journey in life is that God often has me take the path that many people either think that it's crazy to go that way, to think that way. And I'm just like, I'm gonna just go and take, I'm gonna take a shot. I'm gonna take a chance and see what happens. I'll come back and tell y'all because guess what? A lot of the people are still standing there. They didn't even take the other path that everyone else is going. They're still standing there. So I can come back, find them in the same spot and space. And I'm like, yo, this, this is what happened. This is what I learned there. And this is what I have done for my weight loss journey. Not many people told me when I first started my journey, oh, I wish I could start with you. I wish I could start with you. And remember I lost like the first 50 pounds and people, they still was at the same weight. I should have started when you started. And then I lost 75 pounds. Oh, and I came back. I should have lost, I should have started when you started. And you know, so it's like, you're going to sometimes be that trailblazer and you're going to constantly come back. And you're going to keep telling them and they're still not going to follow you. So you just have to just keep doing that because no matter what, eventually your blessing is going to come and then you're going to be the one that's going to break that generational curse. You're going to be the one that's going to make the change in your family and your circle of friends. So sometimes that land of familiar is definitely going to be very beneficial and it is going to be generational and it's going to definitely give you the ability to be that leader even though you may not feel like you're a leader, right? So again, just because you were born there does not mean that you must die there. And this is something I have arguments with people all the time. Well, I was born in New York City and I'm gonna die in New York City. I was born in Brooklyn, I'm gonna die in Brooklyn. Okay, you don't have to, just because that's where your parents were when they gave birth to you does not mean that's where you have to die. You can die somewhere else, right? Meeting the one when you live in a small town or city is very unlikely. And then make sure that you're moving when God says so. Oftentimes, um, we kind of have the approach that they had in coming to America. So remember when coming to America, um, him and Simi were at the globe and they were like, you know, they, 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 they spin the globe and they landed on the United States. And then they flipped the coin and they said, okay, LA or New York. And then when they got the coin, it said New York. And that's where they went. I mean, the destiny could definitely happen that way. 
where God can say, but if that's not how God is telling you to do it, don't do it that way. You know, but if God is telling you a place, if, if you're constantly hearing yourself, you know, just randomly saying places, that's, that's why sometimes you hear me say, let me not identify, let me not just call out a city or call out a country because things tend to happen when that, that happens with me. But if God is calling you, and even if it's someplace you have never been, then that means that there's a significance. Like I knew I, I needed to go to Myrtle Beach and people were like, well, why would you want to go there? You know, it's cold at that time. It's a whole bunch of old people there. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm being called to go there, not to move there, but to go there. And that's exactly what I did. I knew that I had to do that in that particular season, right? Sometimes you're going to have to just do it afraid. Do it afraid, you know? What's that, um, Amina, I don't know if you have, um, you're the only one I could see on the chat right now. What's that, sh that show that was on Netflix um, that everyone was talking about um, a couple of weeks ago where the young lady went to, was it Italy? Was, did she go to Paris? And I think she went there for like a program, like an art program, and her family was totally against it. You know, and here she did. She ended up meeting the love of her life. And so many times, you know, we don't realize that, yes, you're going to be afraid, but it's like you have to still do that because you don't know what's going to come with that. And you just got to have faith. You got to have faith that you're going to stay, that, that, that you're going to remain safe. You're going to have faith that you're going to enjoy yourself. You're going to have faith that you're going to learn something new. And you have to have faith that the right connections that you're supposed to receive is going to happen. And that's how I like to word it. It's not that it's going to be the connection of my husband. It could be the, it could be the connection to me and to me and my husband. So sometimes you got to kind of think about it that way. Right. So a deeper look at the comfort zone. And I know people, I get a lot of slack when I talk about this because everyone has brought into this, you know, especially being a black American, we have been told, you know, all about black love and I'm all for black love, you know, if my husband is a black man, by all means, let's go. Um, but I also understand that God might not have that in his plan. God might not have it where, I, you know what I'm saying? We have to think about Ruth was a formula. So that means she was a different background nationality. That might be the same story for you. Like I know someone and I said this to them and I said, you know, you might've met your husband, you might've met your wife already. But their family told them they can only marry a Black American. You can't marry anyone else. So they have limited their dating pool. And I'm like, well, what if you did meet your wife? But she happens to be Haitian. You know, maybe she's a Haitian American. Oh, no, I can't do that because my family said that's not what we do. So a lot of times listening to our families can also limit our ability to meet that person because you carry that with you, right? So even if that person moves to a whole different country and then let's say um, black Americans in that country is only 2%, you're talking about how likely are you going to meet a single black, or wo black American woman in another country? How likely is that? It's not very likely. So we have to really start to think about this. Um, God. Speak to God about marrying someone of your same nationality or race. And that's something I always say. That's a conversation between you and God. I can't, all I can do is just have you open up your eyes and think about that and think about maybe I am limiting my beliefs. Maybe I am limiting my abilities. Um, maybe I'm just listening to what social media is saying. Talk to God about that, right? Um, the only thing that I will only I will ever say is that when it comes to this topic is that just make sure that the person never takes you away from your relationship with God, right? That's God's main, main concern. If that person is trying to um, have you say that, you know, God doesn't, God isn't real, Jesus isn't real, then that person really 99.9% not, .9 is not the person for you. Um, but that person is going to definitely um, help you to get closer to God, if anything else. All right. So another thing, a lot of times I hear about women, especially women. Um, I can't date a man who's, who's older than me. And I can't date a man who's younger than me. 
And by all means, I definitely understand about the younger. And the reason why I know, you know, sometimes God has to correct me about that because I used to be very firm. Like, I didn't even want to date guys that were three years younger than me. And God recently had me, you know, I was dating someone and he was two and a half years younger than me. And I was like, okay. He was still mature in a way. He had his, he had his immature ways, but it wasn't like that. But he had a lot of wisdom. So I was cool with that. And anyone that knows me and I'm on my open book, I have traditionally always dated guys who are older than me. Um, for some reason, I just don't relate to a lot of men that are in my age group, especially when I was younger. So some of you might feel like, oh, someone who's five years older than me, 10 years older than me. Oh, no, I can never do that. You know, again, I know there are some people that have strict, strict limitations when it comes to age. Like there are so, like, it's crazy. Some of the things that I have heard from when I did workshops and I'm you know, talking on social media, some are like, no, I cannot. If he can't be three years older than me, he cannot be three years younger than me. It has to be in this range. You are limiting. You are limiting, right? And so when you think about that, as long as the person is of age, God is not the author of confusion, okay? So you're not going to be 21 years old talking about he's 11. That's my husband. Not at 11. He's not. He ain't your husband today. Like, I'm going to need you to let that one go. I don't know what God telling you, but God ain't going to have you out here being a pedophile on purpose, okay? Um, he's not going to do that. So definitely speak to God also about marrying somebody that has um, a significant age gap or just an age gap different because, again, some people have three years, can't be three years younger, can't be three years older, all right? I just want us to get to a point where we just have so much peace, like, where you're just like, the, if you're not realizing... We are just going to like release all of the worry, all of the anxiety, and just have so much faith that the right person is coming, right? So I want you to get to a point where you just start, you're just like closing your eyes and you're like, God, I'm not seeing a person. And you just like, I'm not seeing a face. I'm not seeing a body structure. I'm not seeing a height. I'm not seeing a weight. I am just looking for the person that has a, the, the heart. That's what you're looking for. That's what you should be looking for. And when you start to have that level of peace, you are able to go out there and just enjoy life. The person that wants to be with you wants to see you enjoying life. And so many times, I, you know, women, and I say, I say women mostly because there are some women who just don't know how to enjoy life because they're worried about how do I look? Am I supposed to look this way? You know, are my lashes right? You know, look, I have met guys and I look like a straight bum, had on sweatpants, you know, my one leg pan, one, one, um, one leg was up on my, um, one other pants leg was up. My skin was ashy and they, they still wanted to talk to me. If y'all remember 2016 through, I want to say 2017, when I went natural for the first time and I cut off that perm and I was out here trying to do some twists, I was looking crazy. But I met someone who did not care about any of that. That person was not worried about any of that. I'm worried about it. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm being subconscious. Oh my gosh, my hair looks crazy. Even This is before I even cut my hair into a mohawk. They don't care about that. If the person truly can see you, they can see your spirit, they can see your fruits, they're not going to worry about that. So yes, it's, it's good to get dressed up and look good for yourself. But guess what? You might not meet that person when you're dressed up. You might just meet them when you go run to the gas station and fill up your tank because you don't want to do it in the morning, right? And that's where you're going to meet that individual. So start to have that peace and just knowing, God, you have me protected. You got my best interests in your hands. I know that I'm in favor of you. I know that the person is going to come. And when that man sees me, whether I look together to all the to-do, or if I look plain Jane, that man is going to still be madly in love with me. And I also say be mindful about wearing a lot of makeup because you're seeing a lot of stories recently um, where men are divorcing their wives because for the first time that they've seen them without makeup, they're like a whole different person. I saw two stories in like the last two months where women were like, oh, my husband divorced me or we got an annulment because 
all the time that they met, from the time that they met to the day that they had their wedding night, that man has never seen her without her makeup. And when now, here you are, this is your husband. You got to sleep next to him and you got to take off all that makeup. But that man is looking at you like, who are you? Like, you're not the person that I met two months ago, two years ago. So you have to really just think about that in that, that aspect. Does this person love me when my hair looks crazy? You know, I haven't had a haircut. Is he going to be like, oh, babe, you need to get your hair, get your life together. You know, you want that, right? Is he going to love you if you gain 10 pounds, 20 pounds, or if you lose weight? Do you know how many guys did not have one person in my, my life? When I had first started to lose weight, he was like, you know, I'm not going to be attracted to you when you lose this weight. And that let me know that person was not my person. Because he didn't understand from the health aspect. He was like, mm, I like big girls. I like them big. You know how I like my women. And, and, and that gave me peace of knowing you and I will always just be cool. We will be friends, but we would never be long-term partners because when I lose the weight again, you're going you're gonna to have a problem with that. So we got to think about all these aspects, right? And then you have to ask yourself, do you truly want the man God has for you? If you are not ready to release these things, the, the worry, the anxiety, then do you really want what God wants for you? Do you really want that? If you don't want it, then that's cool. You can continue to go, go through life doing things the way that you have been doing it. And everything that has been written in this book, you can take what you want and you can leave it and, you know, and, and that's it. But if you want what God wants for you, then you have to start understanding it's going to be in his time and in his will. Everything else, we cannot do anything else. It's not your job, right? So you have to really come into that understanding. So you have to ask yourself, are you ready to get out your comfort zone? Are you ready to move if God is telling you to move? Are you ready to travel to those unknown cities and countries? Some of you have, some of you are being told to go to certain cities and states, and you're probably trying to figure out, but why would I want to go there? Don't worry. Don't try to question it. Don't question it. Just book it. Book it. <laughs> book it. Go. Go for a weekend. Go for a few days. Go and explore and see. There might be a reason why you need to go there, right? Are you open to your purpose maybe being younger, being older, or just a whole different nationality? If you're not open to that, talk to God about that, right? And, and again, do you believe that God has the right man just for you? If you have that belief system, then this process will start to get a little bit easier. This will... This, this is where you're going to be able to buy back time to worry about your own healing. This is going to give you time to buy back to worry about your purpose, right? If I wasn't in purpose, I would be sitting here probably on a dating app, swiping, swiping, swiping. See, when you're in purpose, you don't have time for those things. Again, unless God is telling you, go on that dating app. Yes, stay on this dating app. If you are seeing and you're getting signs and God is telling you yes, then do it. But if God is telling you, do you know how many times I will listen to my friends? Girl, try it. Go on hinge. I don't even think I can make it. I, I think the longest that I, I was on a date and that was probably two days. I don't last on dating apps. My spirit, my energy instantly can, can determine this ain't for me. This ain't where my husband's going to be. Because I can't even tell most guys, you know how many times I've been on dating apps where I was telling my profession, just my profession, not Miss Inspiration, not an author, not a, not a strategist, just being a college professor. I have had so many guys stop speaking to me. Oh, you too smart for me. What? Come again? Did you just say that? Like, I will be responding. Did you just say that, sir? Don't, don't tell people that. Don't tell anyone that. Mm -mm, that's not cute. So just imagine. But if I'm out somewhere and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I'm showing up as Miss Inspiration, and that man sees me and he's comfortable with that, that is going to be a different story. That's what we want. We want the man that's going to be comfortable with who you are, where you don't have to dumb yourself down, where you can, you can tell them what kind of degrees you have or don't have. None of that will matter because that man is going to see you. Like I said, we want to get into a space where we start looking at people's fruit. 
what, not what they say, but what is their fruit? What is the, what is their spirit saying? Not what their mouth is saying. Cause they can say a whole bunch of nothing. They just be talking. And they saying a whole bunch of nothing. That's not what we want. Right? So we have to start having these conversations, start talking to God. Like I said, when we look at this concept, I don't even want you just to look at it from the standpoint of just relationships. I want you to look at it from every aspect. Some of you have only applied to one type of job field. I know people, um, there's a, a Facebook group that I'm in and I was talking to a young lady, I was commenting and she said that she had 15 years of experience in retail. And she worked at almost every fast food restaurant she worked at uh, many, you know, clothing stores, Macy's, JCPenney's. And so I said to her, I said, well, why don't you apply to be the trainer for these, you know, for the, and human resources. Now they have other departments called learning and development. But why don't you apply to be the trainer for the new cashiers from the company standpoint? Because McDonald's, they have. Um, training. So it might not be the actual cashiers, but they might stay send people out to different um, locations. Maybe you should apply for that. And she was like, but I can never do that. Why not? You have 15 years of experience. So you're only going to keep applying to just be a cashier. Some people don't even apply to be supervisors or team leads or shift leads. They just, they go from being a cashier in one place to a cashier to another place to a cashier to another to a cashier. And they're going to cashier themselves to death. And it's like, no, get out your comfort zone, right? We're seeing a lot of people um, get out of different career fields. You know, they're taking a chance on IT. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to try out. Maybe I could do um, cybersecurity, right? What is giving you, what, what is God giving you a nudge towards? Allow that to speak to you. Because again, when you start putting yourself in different spaces, the way that I look at things right now, when you start having that level of confidence in yourself and saying, I'm gonna take a chance and, and try something new, especially in my career. For some reason, when we do things in our careers, it gives us a different level of confidence. That's going to give you the confidence to accept the person that's gonna come into your life. Because now you have a confidence of, you know what? Yes, I am worthy, right? Some of you, God might have told you a long time ago that your husband is going to be a, a business owner, right? You might end up, you know, you might go into a restaurant on your lunch break and you end up meeting the franchise owner. You don't even know that. One day I went to, um, went to Dunkin' Donuts and there was a gentleman in, in the parking lot, the parking lot, beautiful car. And he was an older, older gentleman. So he was up, he was up my alley. I ain't gonna lie. And you know, he, he winked at me, he smiled, so we started talking. And he, I come to find out he was a franchise owner. Only reason why I didn't say that because he was married. And I, I don't play them games. I don't play with people, um, people's husbands. But it was just like a confidence boost of like, God, you keep telling me these things. And you know, somebody of of that statue was interested, and I didn't block it. I didn't doubt myself, but I didn't put myself in this mindset of, you know, I'm just a fill in the blank. No, I saw myself as, as an amazing, extraordinary woman that can find favor in someone who has that, that, that level of, of, of success. So sometimes you have to really start putting yourself in different environments. And when you start to build that confidence within yourself, it will help you to, uh, to help you to receive the kind of man that God is showing you. And some, it might take some time because God might have already been telling you a certain type of person, you know, not looks wise, but certain traits. And it might be very difficult for you to accept that. You have to let that go, right? Look at how many, there was, um, what, there was, it was a plus size woman on TikTok when she started showing her husband, her husband, he's one of those personal trainer, body models, fitness model types. And she's a plus size woman. And people were just so nasty towards her. And when her husband spoke, he said, I saw the person, I saw her heart. I saw who she was. And I saw the confidence in her. I saw that she wasn't intimidated by the way that I looked and didn't, sh didn't shrink herself. That's what you want. Because that might end up being your story. And you have to be okay with that. Because again, 
that man is also going to know whether or not are you insecure? Are you going to be intimidated when a, a model comes and, you know, she's going to sashay, she's going to want his attention. Yeah, she's going to want his attention. But we're going to believe that that, that man is going to continue to hear God as well and know that this is just temptation trying to distract you. We're not entertaining it. So there's a lot that we have to really start thinking about when we think about our comfort zone. Ask God, where should I start with working on getting out of my comfort zone? And then move forward from there. Right. So tonight was actually a short night because chapter seven is a short chapter. But I think this chapter gives you a lot to think about, gives you a lot to really meditate on, gives you a lot to really sit back and ask God, like, you know, what, God, am I doing the right thing? And that's the rest what I want. If, if, if you get nothing else out of this, this, this seven days, I'm forcing you, encouraging you to have more conversations with God. That's what I want for you. I want you to sit with God and literally start to get to that space where you start to say, God, I don't want what I want anymore. I want what you want for me. That's what we want to get to. Because the things that we have been doing for ourselves, we're not doing a good job. <laughs> right? We're not doing a good job. Like I know my choices and relationships, I have not been doing a good job at it. So you know what, God, I'm going to have to give you, the, I'm going I'm to have to entrust in you to be, my matchmaker, because my decisions are not good decisions, right? Because we often go backwards. We go back. And the reason why we go backwards is because we're comfortable, right? It's very easy for us to go back to the, to the ex-boyfriend from 10 years ago because it's comfortable. You're familiar with that individual. So you already know nine times out of 10, if he cheated back then, you're probably already thinking he might cheat on me again. If he used you for your money back then, he might use you for your money. But you know what? It was a warm body. I had somebody that, that helped me once in a while. But is that what you really want? No. Is that what God wants for you? No. So that's why a lot of times I even say sometimes with jobs, it's very rare for me to go backwards. Like I'm really trying to get into, and I'm trying to stand and really stand on this. And some days we, we, we fall short, but we don't want to go backwards. So if you left and you know that you left for a good reason, even if that person did change, because people change. But you don't have to experience their new change unless God says that's the person. Because yes, there are some people that it didn't work out when you were 17 years old. And now you're 37. Yeah, God says that's your husband today. Because the 37-year-old today, he's able to be the man that I need him to be. But when he was 17, when he was 21, 25, he was not the man. Even at 30, he was not the man. But the man that he is, the man that I'm presenting to you today at 37, that's the man that I want you to marry. And so sometimes that happens as well, All right? So back to the offer. Again, I do have an opportunity. Um, I had decided to extend it so that it's, you, you get the same price for two months, not just one month. So that'd be a total of um, two sessions each month. Um, it is $279 normally for a month, but I am offering it right now until December 19th, I mean, December 10th for $129 per month. So that would include two sessions, two 45 video sessions by Zoom. And then you also get access to two exclusive teachings that um, only a few people have ever encountered. So if that is something that you're interested in, I've given you on Facebook, look in the description. For those of you on um, Instagram, look in, the, look in the, the description. And for those of you that have registered and signed up, go into the email and you actually have an extra promo code. If anyone wants access to that promo code or even access to that bonus workbook, because it's going on sale this week, all right? That will be an actual tool that you will be able to purchase online. But those that registered, that joined me for the seven days, they got it totally for free. And they also get an extra 10% bonus for this offer right here. So if you want that, today is the last day for you, for you to register. After today, they will no longer be available. But that handbook will be available to you for you to purchase. All right? So you can go to your email or go to the description and definitely um, take a look at it. So I thank you. Um, we are finished a few minutes. So if you do have any questions, you can pop it into the chat. Um, let me go over to Facebook and see if Facebook maybe have any questions. But I do thank you for spending some time with me today. Um, this topic, as always, is one of those topics that I just love, um, but I know that it is necessary. So tomorrow is our final night. 
final night is tomorrow night. And we're going to be going over chapter eight, which is practice patience. Trust me, that's not my favorite chapter either. But it's a chapter that we need to go over. All right. So I love you all. God loves you. I'm praying for you. Be well. Be blessed. Have a good night. And keep talking to God about things. That's all I can continue to encourage. Talk to God about it. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.